Alright folks, this is Vox. We're gonna be continuing on and uh we're gonna be thrashing Flower Hat. Oh yes. Flower Hat is going to get it. So, a huge amount of things to learn around about on this map. First thing are these purple blocks. Completely new. And they are gem blocks. Gem blocks are the most amazing thing in this game. They are like gold, except they are infinite. They never run out. And I'll know how long you mine them, them infinite gold forever. Kind of ridiculous. Uh, at the same time, quite useful. Now, generally, because you have infinite gold, just make huge amounts of notes. And uh, we're going to be taking a slightly faster approach to this level, I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we attack it. There are so many different ways to defeat this level because you have infinite gold. Um, I mean, for instance, it means you can train your eight creatures for as long as you want. Uh, maximum level is level 10. And uh, you get all your creatures to level 10 without any problems. Totally a viable strategy. I've done that quite a few times. Just let this game run in the background while you train them. Alright, now I would advise, no matter how you're going to do this, to get large numbers of imps. Just set this one block, which will preoccupy three imps on, and uh, have them dig out gold while you're the gems. Don't worry about funds. Right, that will be enough to uh, expand the gold room. Uh, as always, keep a room square, but eh, this, this little side parts here, they won't matter. You must have enough gold. Oh, sorry, don't. Hurry up. Um, while I'm waiting for this room to be done, I guess I'll set the rest to dig it. Right, good. You can have uh, 15 imps digging up that uh, gold scene. So, if you have over 15 imps, then you can just leave the whole thing on. Uh, or if you just want 15 or over imps, then you can just leave it on. And, uh, let's start working on our layout. Yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna make uh, two hatcheries. Uh, one for the training room and the new room that we can get. And uh, one for the lair and library. Kinda group them like that. And we're gonna make the hatchery for over here quite big. This is where we're gonna put the training room. Uh, just uh, to the right of this room. <coughs> But, uh, just make room for one extra room, and I would make it 5x6. I'm gonna skip to when I've already designed all of this. Oh, eventually you, uh, actually can't set any more, uh, clicks, and this happens when, uh, you have too many jobs for imps. And it will tell you when that happens. Kurt, there's no chimp imps any more jobs. You cannot give your chimps any more jobs. Chimp, chimp, chimp. Now let's get more imps, then. You must have enough gold. How many do I have? 23, that's enough to- I don't know, I'll do that. Come oh, down, no. need diggers, not, uh, fortification. Oh, jeez. Give me some of that. I went ahead and dug towards the portal, and don't dig here. As you can see, that just kills you. Yeah, don't- don't dig into open areas if you don't know what's there. Now, these- this- all of this gold is safe, uh, apart from this gold. I'm gonna build a lair here. Having gold at the border of a room is fine here, because I don't expect any heroes around here. Or at least not any dwarves. Ah, there we go. We can end up to here now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a hatchery around this side. That's a plenty big enough hatchery. And... You wanna keep your, uh, libraries well out of the way when you're dealing with high-level warlocks, which we will be. The reason for this is that high-level warlocks will kill imps if uh, they don't, if they're just uh, in the tra in the library. Even. So keep your imps out of the library, and the best way to do this is to make it a really remote location and just give them a job somewhere else at some point in time. Uh, in fact, I'm going to grab a whole bunch of imps and uh, get them to start going ahead full speed at this area. So back when I've dug this out. On second thoughts, I'm going to make this slightly bigger, and I would suggest putting this extra room very close to this area. Um, I'm also giving a path, but not all the way, and we'll see why that is a little bit later. Or at least I'll explain. 
All right, I have a working layout now. So this is the way I, I would lay it out. Got your library, hatchery, lair, another hatchery, training room, spare room, uh, and tunnels just to make things a little easier for creatures to get around. For instance, uh, quick tunnel there for payday when uh, all my creatures are in the training room. Which will be most of this level, I imagine. So... An entrance has been claimed. Ah, good. Ah, here we go. The new room. The workshop. This is the next thing I have to learn about after learning about the uh, gems. The workshop is a completely new room for us, and allows us to build things. For free, in fact, once the workshop is built, you have the creatures do it. It attracts a specific kind of creature, which we probably just got. Let's see that in a second. Yes, new creature in Dungeon Troll. Okay, he's inside the hut. There he is. Look at him. He receives a slap. Honorary slap. Alright. He will automatically go to the workshop, but we don't want him to, we want him to train. And the reason I didn't dig out this is so it's a longer journey, so I have more chance for picking them up in time. Oh, warlock. We'll get a lot of warlocks and trolls on this map, mostly trolls. And, uh... Warlocks and trolls is a decent fighting force. I imagine the tactics there will be fine. Chickens! Yes! At this point, train all of your creatures. No real reason to uh, go easy on them. And uh, let's have 40 imps. 40 is a good one. Put 8 of them in the train. Yes, we are going to train imps. Oh, yeah, that's why you're in such a huge training room. 8 will be plenty to train. Um, and uh, yeah, 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 I think I'll do it. So, yeah, train some imps, train some guys. Well, as for requirements on training, I would train until you have at least one warlock to a very high level. Um, at the end of the game, you'll need to train that warlock up to level 8. Uh, so, if you have him at level 8 by the time you dig through towards the enemies, which is this way, then you're fine. But if, if you don't, then make sure you research before you start digging. That's, that's the major thing. I think I am going to train all of my creatures up to the has been researched. Oh, why the hell is somebody researching? Oh, you weren't training. Well, I'll explain that now. He researched the bridge. The bridge can be used to cross lava or water. Very helpful. You can use it to claim land on the other side of the lava and water as well. So we'll be using that a hell of a lot. Yeah, that's kind of strange. Anyway, train all of your warlocks and, uh... I'm just going to train until one's the way. Um, until then, I'm just going to pause the recording. Alright, so then, uh, until then, yeah. Stuff. Right, sentence, maybe. Alright, at this point I have uh, all 20 creatures. 20 creatures is the maximum you can get in this level. And, uh... It's around now that you'll just want your ones to dig, and... Wow, that's... They, they have way too much gold. <laughs> if you find yourselves with these huge piles of gold lying around, just stop digging for a while and let them... Uh, Fill the treasury. You can always build another treasure room if you feel it's necessary, like, uh, I might build one here. But apart from that, I am literally just going to train until we have at least one level 8. Uh, wizard. Well, look. Wizards die. And now with two gold rooms. Hurrah! Building a little passage here, and I'm also going to build this tiny little makeshift prison room. We'll be using that to store things later. We'll see. Alright, I have uh, level 7 warlocks now, and I'm pretty happy with level 7. We can go with that. So, now that we have that, we're going to start uh, researching. Uh, we'll finish researching, since we researched the bridge. A new spell has been researched. This is a new spell. We actually, I kind of forgot to explain this last time we got it. It's the Speed Monster spell. You can hold down left click to charge a spell, or just simply click to cast it. And, as this basically suggests, it speeds up a monster. We're going to move at matrix speeds. Oh yeah, blood and everything. Uh, another spell, the uh, Cult Arm spell. The Cult Arm spell has uh, an effect radius. The longer you charge it, the larger the radius. And uh, if I place it for instance here, creatures nearby will go towards it. It lasts for as long as you want it to. Double click it to get rid of it. It has a constant cost, which is why its cost seems so low. 
heal. Pretty simple. Heals monsters. And uh, that's basically all we get for the spells in this deck. Well, actually, it's not at all what we get for spells in this we'll, we'll, You'll see. Yeah. Stuff will happen. Oh, interesting thing. If you claim a library that has books in it, you will get whatever those books are as spells. Uh, so if you don't have a spell, you can claim a library with a spell and get it. Uh, I believe they use that more in Dungeon Keeper 2 than they do in Dungeon Keeper 1, but I forget the names of them. Maybe they do use it. Now let's take uh, five trolls, put them under here, and let them run the workshop. You can put uh, Demon Spawn in here as well, but they won't automatically go in. So, what will we find? Uh, what a door has been manufactured. Ah, a door. A wooden door, to be precise. We can now build wooden doors. We only have one at the moment, so not particularly exciting. We'll be building uh, doors for most of our rooms. They improve the uh, they improve the rooms quite a lot. The white bar improves that, which is good. We also have a, a trap, a poison gas trap. They're bugged, so I'm not going to build one now. I'll show you uh, how they work in a bit when we can avoid the bug. And I'll explain the nature of it as well. For now, I'm going to put doors all around my dungeon. Oh yeah. The cool thing about doors is uh, if you left-click on them, they are locked. So this is now a prison room, essentially. Kind of makeshift, but if I throw anything in there that's uh, not a hostile, they will not be able to escape. For instance, I could put large piles of gold in there a door has been manufactured. that wouldn't be possible to be used by anything. Kind of a neat little trick. A door has been manufactured. Manufactured. It's important to put uh, doors, even if they're just wooden doors, around door your trim room and workshop. This way, you can at any time lock them off to stop creatures from the going into them. At this point, I'm going to cut that down, and um, we'll see why for that later. A door has been manufactured. A door factored. Each item in your workshop is represented by a little box. You can even uh, find out they are by rolling over them. You can steal these just like the library books, and uh, they take up room in the uh, workshop, just like the books take up room in the library. So it's not just creatures we're counting for anymore. This means that you have to occasionally move things out of the workshop so that uh, the trolls can continue to fight. Oh, and uh, just like the library, you have a little workshop time bar. It tells you when the next thing is going to be manufactured. 